What is up, my friends? Welcome back. It's a pleasure to have you with us here today. My name is Control for Days. Today, I'm going to be walking you through a March in the Machines Modern League with the deck Black Green Yawgmoth. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been playing around with the main deck of this uh, this build, and I've been having a lot of fun sampling and trying different iterations and variations uh, of this list. Particularly, we've been playing around with the 60th card, whether or not we want to include a third Birds of Paradise, a 22nd land, a card like Abundant Harvest, or today we are trying out the green Preordain. Uh, we are running a Seed of Hope, which is a new card, out of March in the Machine in our main deck. Now, this card is one where there is a significant deck building restriction in that if you are running non-land, non-creature spells, or non-permanent spells, the card is pretty bad. But fortunately for us, we only have seven non-creatures in our entire deck, uh, seven non-permanent spells in our entire deck. And for that reason, casting this spell um, has quite a bit of upside, um, and it serves a similar role as Abundant Harvest in this slot. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, this card reads uh, one green, instant, mill two cards, you may put a permanent card from among the milled cards into your hands, you gain two life. So the hope here is just to get the, the type of permanent card that we want while getting a little value while being able to do it at instant speed. And the reason why the instant speed is important is because of our wall of roots, we can cast it during our opponent's turn and get the value at that point in the game. Um, my good friend Lucas was the one who suggested uh, this card in our deck today. He watched our previous video, uh, our previous Yawgmoth video, and suggested that we give this a try, comparing it to uh, Preordain. And there's a, you know, it's not obviously not the same exact thing, but there is a little bit of a similarity. Um, Lucas is a stats guy and gave me the, uh, the breakdown in terms of what the percentages are to hit with this card. So if we are looking... Um, with one out of the two cards to hit, it's 98.8%. And then if we were to hit both, it would be 77%. So we're 98.8% to hit a card, um, at least one card off of this. So we're gonna give this a try. We're gonna run it through a league. Uh, I, I just realized I don't have my sideboard lined up for you guys. Let me pull these guys over here. The sideboard today, similar to what we've been running, the only difference um, from the last couple of leagues and the newly updated sideboard guide is we have Pylon back in our sideboard today. I don't think I gave it a fair chance. New card out of March in the Machine. Uh, versatile removal spell with Convoke. We're running this back in our list today. We're going to jump into this league. I would love it if you join me. Tupac's cousin. Uh, Ming is on the play. And we are on the draw, and in true Control for Days fashion, we are starting off with what looks like a mulligan. Second hand I like much better. We're gonna keep this one. I think we're gonna ship back the innkeeper. Let's do it. All right, opponent leads on approving grounds. They are communicating to us that they are likely playing creativity. Uh, and for that reason, I'm actually gonna lead on Young Wolf here. And next turn, I'll go Wall of Roots into Birds of Paradise. Playing around a, a, um, a Ren and Six here. No fetch land. Okay, I like it. Cool, cool. Quarter Calling, not a terrible draw. So the question on this turn is, do I attack with the Young Wolf or do I not? If I attack, I can't cord for one. If I do attack, or vice versa. If I attack, I can't cord for one. If I don't attack, I can cord for one. I think the upside of being able to cord for one is higher uh, than attacking. We'll see if our opponent bolts our bird here, and that will give us a little more information. So I think it's actually correct to play these out pre-combat in this situation. So they bolt my bird down. Okay. Uh, so for that, with that, I will be attacking. You baited him into it. Got you, Ming Pack. All right, 19. It's going to go down to 18, I imagine, during their end step to fetch. Get themselves a stomping ground, pass the turn. Opponent thought seizing us. I was not expecting that. I think it's actually a pretty close decision here. We don't have a second black mana, so the Court of Calling, there is an argument. They go for the, the Yawgmoth instead. And they just pass the turn. They are short on resources here. All right, we rip a second Court of Calling pretty solid. One, two, or five. Okay, so from here, I think we just get ourselves a Grist. 
And then next turn, we'll get ourselves a Yawgmoth. Plus the Grist. Pass the turn. So, looking pretty good right now. Okay, opponent pulls their third land. So this does confirm we are playing against Creativity, which is what we were expecting. In Forest. Okay. So they're showing us Jund colors right now, so they might not actually have counter magic. Uh, I mean, they don't have counter magic up right now, but they might not even have it in the deck. Okay, so from here, pretty free for us to just attack with this young wolf. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold back this Court of Calling for another turn. Um, I kind of want to bait them into, like, if they have another fetch land or a dwarf in mind, trying to cast a creativity, and then we'll blow them out from there. Okay, Fable's fine too. And I think there might be a, uh, a scoop here. Discard our Yawgmoth, but two turns later we got one anyway. Alright, Yawg is on the battlefield. Dump down this card. I'm gonna dump down this insect. I'm gonna draw one more card here. And I think this just gives us the win from here. Okay, we'll move back to our turn. Drew into a wall of roots. Uh, sure. From here, I'm gonna cast out Wall of Roots. I think I'm going to Evo this insect. And the question here is, do I get a Blood Artist or do I get a Hepatra? I could also get myself an Innkeeper, which is pretty solid. Innkeeper kind of does the same thing. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna get an Innkeeper. And having gotten the Innkeeper, the right move was actually not to, not to plus the Grist yet. From here, we'll attack with these guys, put them down to 10, we're going to draw some more cards. All right, there's our second young wolf, and this is going to be game. Unfortunately, the clicking here is going to be extensive. Here, we're in business. Opponent told me I do not have infinite cards in my library. No, but I have two endurances. Okay, moving to sideboarding. Silex, Might. Because this is looking like the Jun version, we're going to bring in our Thought Seizes. Okay, these are going to be our ins, these are going to be our outs. Opening seven, looking like a 22 uh, land hand. We're going to mulligan this one. Our six is not great. I probably kept a seven. I think I'm supposed to mulligan this as well. We'll keep this one. Still not great. Get rid of those two. Get to see Seed of Hope in action here. See how its debut looks. Opponent plays out a stomping ground. They shock. Alright, so they are representing a lightning bolt. And for that reason, uh, yes, I'll pay two life and I'll play out my young wolf. Feel free to bolt that. Nope, no bolt. Fetch. It's looking like a Ren and Six here. Could also be a bit of reunion. Ren and Six. Got the Bloodstained Mire back in their hand. Pass the turn. And we drew into an Endurance. So from here the question is, is it worth it playing out this Ignoble or not? Attacking the Ren down to two? I think it might be worth it. They definitely have a Lightning Bolt in hand as well, so... We're gonna keep that on our radar. And we're gonna fire off this Seed of Hope. And we'll bring Blooming Marsh back. Pass the turn. All right. Know about the Bloodstained Mire. They have seven cards in hand. There it is. So if they go like Fable and ping the Hierarch, we won't be able to kill this Ren and Six. Okay, no Fable. And they plus Bloodstained Mire into hand. All right, Yogg, not bad. We'll attack in this Ren and Six. And then we're going to pass turn from here. We'll cast out our Endurance on our next turn here. The hope is that they try to get a little greedy with their creativity. And that they want a creativity for like two as opposed to one. Or if they try to go for like a persist line, we'll be able to take advantage of that. There's the Mire. Fetch. Okay, there's the Dwarven Mine. Renin six. I'm going to give them that. I'm not going to fight over that right now. And we're going to flash in this Endure. I'm actually not going to shuffle anything here. I don't really want these cards back in my library. Interesting choice on my opponent's part not to do anything over here. It's not clear what they're representing, but 
good to know. Um, maybe start with an attack into the Renin Six, or maybe not. I mean, they are kind of like representing a lightning bolt, but maybe that's okay. Like they block with the dwarf and then bolt, or maybe they just let this happen. Here's the block. Now I wonder if they bolt in response. So maybe it was right to play out the Yogg first. They're gonna bolt our wolf as well. Three mana, they cycle and they draw into a card. It's amazing, they have eight cards in their hand. I only have one, but just the fact that I have a young wolf, a uh, young wolf and a Yogg moth in play, I actually feel, I don't wanna say confident, but I don't feel like we're that far behind right now. So I suppose the way we lose this is if they have a Veil of Summer. Okay, drawing into a Hierarch, not terrible. So we're gonna play this out pre-combat. I think we're gonna swing, I wonder if we just swing at them at this point, or do we tack into this Renin Six? I think we'll tack into the Renin Six. They're gonna cycle here, I guess. Okay, proving ground back into hand. So not hitting our Hierarch here. Another Wooded Foothills. Opponent casts Veil of Summer. So from here I can besage you one of these lands, and I think I'm gonna do that. Okay, there's the Dwarven Mine. Sure, let that trigger. We're gonna keep that right now. Veil of Summer on the stack. If we can draw into another besage you, that would be great. Would not mind that. And here we're getting punished. Here we are getting punished. So that was a mistake on my part. I shouldn't have done that. I suppose actually, no. Yeah, that was a mistake. All right, we're probably dead here. Let's see if they get fancy with their creativity targets and have other stuff in the deck. They do. Okay, this one I can deal with. This is not very scary. Not as scary. One, two, one, two, three. Okay, so we got our Grist in play, we got our Wall of Roots in play. We'll pass the turn from here. One has six cards in hand. Okay, opponent targets my token with Ren in six. Token goes away. Minus on this Titan of Industry. Cycle of Proving Ground. So this, I guess this means that there's not gonna be another creativity this turn, in which case we're actually not in terrible sh Oh, okay, they have another land. Maybe there will be. Probably not though. Like they could creativity the Rhino. Hopefully they attack into the Grist here. Grist and me. Sure, we'll go down to 11. Opponent plays out a second Ren and six, sure. Now if they hit my Yogg Moth here, they don't, they're just bringing back a land. Yeah, we're perfectly fine with this. We might be able to recoup from here. Okay, Hierarch, not terrible. So one, two, play out our Wall of Roots. One, two, play out our Hepatra. Play out our Ignoble. Uh, we're gonna attack into this other Renin Six. Put it down to one. And we're gonna make some tokens with this Hepatra. Double thoughts is not really what we're looking for here. Okay, got another land. Best draw from here is some sort of a tutor, um, but I think we're okay with this. If we get double bolted, that would be unfortunate. Opponent fetches for a blood crypt end of turn, back to them. Okay, opponent is attacking in. Okay, my only concern from here is like double lightning bolt. So we'll just block like this. And we're gonna proliferate. Two more one ones. Nice little trick with Hepatra there. We'll take no damage. Opponent fetches, gets a stomping ground. Uh, they're gonna hit one of our snakes, sure. And they cast, hard cast an archon, uh, sure. We'll sack a snake, discard a thought seize. 
We're going to minus on this Archon. Drew into a Silex. A little bit late on that one. Uh, we'll move back to our turn, I think. Okay, and that just that should be game. Hierarch. Two, three. Evo. We get ourselves our Blood Artist. And we just start mowing them down. Our opponent scoops. One and up. We're on the play. Opening seven. Can't keep this. We're going to mulligan. Six, I like. We will keep this one. And I think we're going to send back... I think we're actually going to go and send back the basic forest. We're going to take some damage off our land, but I think it's okay. Just want to ensure that I have double black. Opponent keeps their seven. Lead ignoble and pass the turn. Let's see what LSN is doing on the opposite side of the table. <coughs> Advantage. Swift Spear. Okay, so we're playing against Burn here. So maybe the move was to uh, keep the basic forest. We drew into an overgrown too. So I can go down to 17. <clears throat> or I can just fetch a big. I think we're just going to fetch basic here. So I think I'm going to go Wall of Roots, fetch basic swamp. Play out Hepatra. So the hope here is that they play an Eidolon. I'm gonna let them attack. I'm gonna block with Wall of Roots. And if they want to fire a bolt off at my Wall of Roots, I'm fine with that. I don't think they expected me to block there. I think, I don't know what they expect. I think they probably just expected it to go through. Searing Blaze, sure. Okay, now we got our Yawg online. So the Swift Spear is not, not getting through anytime soon. And next turn we should have a way to gain some life. And we should be pretty good from there, hopefully. They do still have six cards in hand. Three land, three land in play. Guide, sure. And they attack with both. We have a Grist on top. Okay. Block there, I'll block there. See if they're cognizant of the uh, fact Yawgmoth has pro-humans. Oh. I f 6 through my turn there. I should not have done that. Um, all right, we're going to get our Grist online here. We're going to hang back one more turn. Next turn is when we'll start doing stuff. We're at 12 life. Our opponent could just have four three mana damage spells and three mana, three damage burn spells and do us in there. But then again, they need another land to make that happen, so. And it's unlikely. Wall of Roots on top. Do our blocks like this. Bolt, target me. Sure. <clears throat> Down to nine. I think we're going to minus on this this goblin guy. We're going down to 8 here. Down to 5. Life total's getting a little sketch. So the question is, how do we gain the most life this turn? And I think that's going to be Innkeeper. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's Blood Artist. So if I get Blood Artist, 1, 2, 3. Blood Artist into play. And I think it's just Innkeeper. So we'll just go Innkeeper. Token. Plus, gain a life. Cast our Wall of Roots. Cast our Bird. Okay, and now they're kind of priced into killing this Innkeeper, because if they don't, it's just going to start getting out of control. Rift Bolt. Where are you pointing at? They have one card in hand. Okay, they're pointing at the Innkeeper. And we're fine with that. I'm just going to let this happen. I'm not going to draw a card here. Okay, and that's like best case scenario. Um, plus, okay, we're going to get a Blood Artist from here. And a minus on this Swift Spear. We'll draw a card. We're going to proliferate. Done. Two more. And now we're going to swing. I'm going to leave the insect back just in case. All right, our opponent's good. We're up again. Okay, we're going to pull these four. We're going to bring these four in. Game two. Opponent mulligans to uh, six. This hand's a little weak, but I think it's a game. Starts with Arid Mesa Fetch, Basic Mountain, Goblin Guide, and we have a bird on top. Okay, our opponent has four cards in hand. Uh, I think we're going to fetch, play out our bird, 
and then we'll uh, we'll pass the turn from here. The hope is that this survives, but if they point a non-searing blaze burn spell at it, I think we're okay with it. If they cast an idol on, we're very okay with that. Attack, young wolf on top. That's actually pretty good. So we're gonna take the damage here. They have five cards in hand. Second land, idol on. Hopefully, yes. Okay, that is what we wanted. Right, so from here, I am going to fetch with my Burning Catacombs, and we're going to get... I kind of want Swamp, but I kind of don't at the same time. I think we just get another Forest here, to be honest. I don't love it, but I think that's what we did. Stage you this item, and then we're going to cast out our... And then pass turn. So, they have four cards in hand, we're at 14 life. Starting to stabilize a little bit. And the fact they're drawing a card right now, that's pretty good for us. Swift Spear, sure. Okay, finally pulled a land off the Goblin Guide. Nice. We will block the guide here. Okay, we turn to a Yogg, which is interesting. Okay, from here, I'm going to go Bird and Blood Artist, I think. And if they want to kill the Blood Artist, I'm okay with that. And then next turn, I'll have a Yogg Moth in play. Definitely not attacking with this Draws another land. Three cards in hand. I keep saying that because it's super relevant in this matchup. Let's see if they attack with both. They do. That's very aggressive. Wall of Roots on top. All right. We're going to block this Goblin Guide. We're going to bolt the Blood Artist in wrists. Sure. Boros Charm put me down to 10, and they have one card left in hand. So we'll go down to 7. I'm actually going to go down to 6 here. Usually I would say don't do this, but because we have the Haywire Might, I have a little bit of flexibility. Alright, so we have a blocker with the Yogg, and I've got the Might gain some life, if need be. So if they have like Skull Crack and 3 damage spell, we'll be in trouble, but otherwise I think we'll be Or if it's something like Boros Charm 3 damage spell. We're effectively at 7 life right now. That's a land, so that's not it. Let me turn to a Grist. One, two, three. One, so I think we're gonna lead with an attack here with the Yogg Moth. Not too concerned with this Swift Spear at this point. Okay, grist. We'll plus the Grist. Pass the turn. We will be shuffling our graveyard back. Goblin Guide, sure. But it has two cards in hand. Rift Bolt targeting me, sure. Top cards of Hepatra. I'm going to shuffle my graveyard back just because there's a Blood Artist in there. Okay. From here, I think we're going to block. Block. I wonder if I just double block this guide. Yeah, I think we're fine with that. So we plus our Grist, play our Hepatra, swing for five, and then pass the turn. All right, we're still in the danger zone here, so we're not in the clear. Punish says, good luck, GG's, GG's. We did have lethal match. We are on the play. We're going to take it. 2-0. Oh. Uh, I love this one, but I think we're going to keep it. Okay. Yeah, I think we're going to keep this one. Uh, we'll lead on inverted. I'm gonna fetch tomb here. Let's add our hierarchy. Then we'll pass the. If our opponent's playing a fury deck, we're in big, big trouble. But if not, blood crypt. Dragon's rage. Okay. Bobble. Got it. Rebreath. Okay, so this is like some sort of a death shadow variant. So we shouldn't expect to see fury. Most likely. Hopefully not. message my opponent and say, don't fury me, bro. Don't do it. Opponent plays out their second land, fetches. This could very well be a Renin 6, okay. Street Wraith. Okay, they're unholy heating one of our Hierarchs, which we're fine with. This is going to give the Channeler Delirium here. Keeping whatever it is on top. I think they know the top card of our library here. So they have they have the information. They're up to five cards in hand. See if we draw land. 
Draw another bird, okay. Um, add our bird and we'll pass the turn. I suppose there I could have gotten a Grist or a um, an Endurance, but I think I like keeping the cord up better here. Okay, we're down to 11. Life total's starting to dwindle a little bit. They're down to 11 as well. Two mana Tarmogoyf, maybe? Yes. Tarmogoyf, Death Shadow. A lot of big creatures going on over there. All right, from here, we're going to cord, and we're going to get ourselves another Young Wolf. We've got the Yogg locked up for next turn, so it's really just getting all of our stuff into play. From here, I'm going to try to find another land, I think. We do need to be careful that we don't burn ourselves out. It would be good if we had a land. Gris, not... All right, I'm looking for a land here. Not a land. Seven. Still not a land. Okay, that gets rid of the... This actually gets rid of two of their creatures, so I think that's fine. And from here, if we just find land and cord, we're like super close. Three cards in hand. And if I go down to six, it doesn't really matter. So, like, if they have the they just close regardless. There's another endurance, okay? Like six and five are the same thing, essentially. All right, I'm gonna cast an endurance and get rid of a grist here. Right, there's blood artist, still no land. And we can really make a fool of this tarmogoyf if we want to, because we can endurance again. Five life, dodge double bolt, or bolt, and ren and six. Bit of reunion, sure. It's a little unusual. Um, I'll block. I'm not going to plus, I'm not going to do anything, I'm just going to block and let it happen. I have no reason to do anything right now. Sure. I have two cards in hand. So the, I think the safer play here, two, so I can go Innkeeper or Artist. I think I'm just going to go for the win here. I'll just play out the Artist. Attack for six. Still no land. One land. Just cranking with one land. Alright, we got there. We're up again. Still no land. Okay, ins and outs of this matchup. These six are coming in. These six are going out. Opponent Mulligans to six. We're going to keep this seven. Lead Bobble, Bobble, so no Dragon's Rage, fairly clearly. Okay, Bloodstained Mire, opponent fetches. Blood Crypt, 17, 15. Don't look at my top card, they'll be drawing two. Suppose they can have a turn two Death Shadow, which would be kind of scary. Endurance is pretty. So they know about that. That is known information at this point. But it's six cards in hand. Down to 13. So no fetch land, so no death shadow. Play out the blood crypt. Untapped. I guess the consideration there is just just to deal damage, not so much concerned with actually having something up. But here I think I'm not gonna play into like a removal spell. I'm just gonna play out my string root geist and I'll pass the turn. And I'm not gonna attack into them either, just in case they don't have a way to deal themselves another Another point of damage, I don't want to help them get their uh, their death shadows into play. Okay, they do have fetch land. So this might just be to get like a Tarmogoyf into play. Death shadow, okay, they have one. Cool, four life. Four cards in hand, I mean. Okay, Twilight Mirror, not terrible. So we're one turn off of a Yogg as it stands. Next turn we'll have Yogg Moth into play. The only thing is, is do we get, I think if we play out this Blood Artist, it's likely that it dies. So I think we're just gonna play out our Swamp past the turn. We'll be blocking with these guys. We're flashing Endurance. DRC, sure. Shuffle their Graveyard back. So they could try to Unholy Heat this down right now, if they have one, but they're going to choose not to. Very reasonable. Twilight Mire. So I can cast out this Ignoble, but I'm actually going to hold off on it. I know it, it it's parity with the Court of Calling, but if they bolt it, 
they'll get a scry off of it, and then it forces me into courting for Yogg right now. So I'm gonna wait. Opponent casts Thoughtseize. Okay, we're making a move. Well, I just kind of just gave away the information there. Cancel. I'll let this trigger resolve first. We're giving them information though. And they keep a card on top. Okay, get ourselves a Yogg. And I'm just gonna wait on activating the Yogg just in case they have something like a Fatal Push. I take my Blood Artist, they see the Hepatra. Okay, they attack with a Shadow. I'm gonna minus the Shadow here for the same reason I mentioned earlier. We don't want to get Fatal Pushed. So we're gonna play around that. Block here. Let's see if they have a Bolt or something. And hit our Wolf down. They don't. plays out their third land, fourth land. Counting is hard. All right, if they can't kill Yogg, they're in pretty rough shape. So from here, we can kind of just take over. Play out a Wall of Roots, fetch land. I don't know if they knew about that one. They might not have. Hepatra, and I mean, this should just be game, I think. I'm gonna fetch right now. And get dried out of Like, the only concern I have is Fatal Push. That's kind of the card I'm playing around at this point. Unholy Heat targeting Hepatra. I will be doing stuff in response to that. Okay, Hepatra gets this token. And now we can go crazy. Not bad. Um, okay, I'm just gonna let this happen from here. I'm attack with Yogg and our Geist. Like, if they want to block and bolt, I'm fine with that. Okay, opponent's down to four. Uh, we'll discard an overgrown two and pass the turn. So, the way we lose this is if our opponent goes Team or Battle Rage and a, um, a Veil of Summer. That would be the way we lose. I wonder if it even matters. Okay, so we just need to dodge a, a Veil of Summer, basically. Or Double Bolt as well. That would do it too. Round four. Opai. Uh, we are on the draw. Our opponent molds to six. We're lacking business. Ton of mana here. Tempted to keep. Okay, I'm going to keep this. I think this is a risky keep, though. Opponent has revealed an Obash. So, Walter's is pretty good against uh, Blood Moon. Turn one Ragvan, sure. So the hope here is that they don't have a, um, whatever the card is, that Exile is a one drop. I'm actually going to fetch basic here while I have the opportunity, just in case somehow, some way, a Blood Moon comes down. Opponent does not have a second land, pretty rough. Turn two, we'll go Wall of Roots into a Hierarch. Definitely didn't want to draw another Hierarch, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I imagine this Hierarch's getting bolted. And they pass the turn. One has five cards in hand, and they do nothing. All right, drawing into a Yogg is probably best case scenario. We'll get that out there. I think our opponent's considering whether or not they want to bolt down our Young Wolf or our Wall of Roots right now. And they bolt down our Young Wolf. Okay, bolt and endurance, nice. They discard an Elder Gargaroth. That is, that is interesting. Okay, Young Wolf gone. I wonder if they have like a Fury or something. Two cards in hand. When it does not attack, sure. Right, we see an Eldritch Evolution. So I think we're probably going to be setting up this turn. And then next turn will be our kind of our kill turn. I'm just going to let the monkey be for the time being. Second land. They're in business. And they do nothing. I think it's time for our opponent to scoop. Or think about scooping. We drew our fourth wall of roots. Kind of crazy. Um, 
So I think our, I don't even know if it's right to Evo from here. I wonder if we just keep holding this, but I think I will probably start doing some stuff. I start Geist. I'm gonna draw a card with this Geist before I do anything else. Endurance is fine. We'll attack. Okay, bonus tools. Reasonable. Okay, game two against Mono Red Obosh. Quite a lot of cards I want to bring in in this matchup. On the draw, I wonder if I only go two Thoughtseize. And I wonder if I hold off on Force of Vigor and just stick with the Might. I'm going to shave a cord. Okay, I think I'm going to go six and six here. Opponent keeps a seven. We'll keep our seven. Actually, I like this seven card hand. I think this is strong. Stopping ground. Ut uh, Utopia Sprawl, sure. This could mean a turn to Blood Moon, uh, but I don't think we can really do too much about that. We'll just get our Young Wolf into play and pass the turn. Stopping Ram Shock. Another Utopia Sprawl, adding lots of mana. Could also be like a Pillage or something like that. I just splashed a bunch of water in my face. That's cool. All right, uh, we're gonna fetch. Get ourselves a basic swamp and get our wall of roots into play. I think I'm just gonna hold back here one more turn. Uh, two reasons. One, Ragavan, just in case they dash it in. Two, okay. That wasn't something I was thinking of. I should have been thinking of that, but um, second reason was Court of Calling. But yeah, that's that's a fine reason too. I'm gonna cast out a basic forest. Five mana, it looks like. Vorinclex. Okay, 6-6 six, six, Trample Reach. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for up to two forest cards and put them into your hand. Okay. This guy's kind of scary. They have two forests in their hand. And no attacks. Sure. We drew another basic. I don't hate a basic. Um, we're going to get Shieldred into play. And then next turn, hopefully a Yawgmoth, and hopefully just kill from there. So I don't think they can flip this thing this turn. No, they're a couple turns off from that, unless they can untap their lands. So forest, mismatching forests, ew. Three mana, put Obash into hand. They have five cards in hand, nothing, okay. Okay, so from here I think we're actually doing okay. I think I'm just gonna pass from here and I'll cord during their turn. Scalding Tarn looks kind of weird in their deck. I forgot about this. The odd mana ability to deal damage to your permanent player deals double that damage to your permanent player instead. Okay. Yes, yeah, so this thing's going to deal a ton of damage. And they don't attack. Wow. It's very conservative. Okay. Get our Yogg in play. We're going to fetch. The Triad Arbor in play. And we're in good shape untapping here. So this represents just lethal. Um, play out of land. Me Evo, get our Hepatra. And then from here, we can just mow everything down. So we're going to be gaining life here. Four no. Four no. We are going to be on the play against Lightning Cried Wolf. Uh, we have not lost a game yet, so this is, this is not only a 5-0 we're going for, but the flawless victory. So we'll see if we get it. Opening 7. On the draw, this is acceptable. Or on the play, this is acceptable. On the draw, this is a little sketchy. Opponent keeps their 7. We're going to lead Foothills, pass the turn. Of note, this is my third straight league playing for a 5-0. Uh, my last league, I started 4-0 and I lost. The 5 0 in the league before that, I did get the 5 0, so we're streaking here. I think they take the Geist. You don't really see you fetch basic swamp thought seas too often. It's a little unusual. A lot of choices here. Yep. We'll fetch our tomb tapped. Move to our turn. We drew another fetch land. Not really what I was looking for. Um, I don't. I don't think I'm actually going to give them the information. I'm going to keep that fetch land. There goes Blood Crypt. 
I wonder if this is scam. Okay, it's looking like scam. 5-0 against scam. Can we get there? Our third grist. Sure. Fetch. Um, not sure where my library is. Swamp. Get our grist in a play. We'll plus our grist. We mill a wall of roots, and we will yield through the turn. So we're gonna we're gonna have to earn this 5-0 here. And attack some dark wrist. We're fine with that. Got two more. Play out a blood stain mire. Fetch a basic. See if this is a blood moon. Okay. So this is kind of like our opportunity that we have to to get rid of this void walker. I sure do wish I had a two drop right now. Hmm. So I can't just get rid of this fable. I think that might actually be a reasonable line. I'm not, I'm not gonna let them get the value off of it. And we'll pass from here. We'll let them attack the Voidwalker into the Grist. Did I not play out of land? I don't think I did. That was a mistake. My opponent's attacking me and attacking Grit. Uh, yeah, we'll just take it all. Drew into a Wall of Roots, which is I mean, that represents a Yogg Moth, so that's not terrible. So we'll cast our wall. Evo our wall into a Yogg. And the unfortunate thing about this is if they do have a form of removal, like a Terminate, Yogg will not, not be here for long. What's that? 12 life. Five cards in hand. They didn't cast a Fury last turn, so I don't think they have one. Could be mistaken, but... It's my impression. The opponent sacrifices the Void Walker, sure. See if they're putting Grist into play, which I'm guessing is what they're doing. There's the Grist, sure. Let's see if they know how this works. It's going to be unfortunate for them. So, unless they have a Flash Threat, this is not going to do what they want it to do. Season Pyro, sure. So, sequencing wise, they should have done that first. Discard two lands, draw two cards. Play a land, and nothing else. We're good. Geist is a very good draw. So we're going to leave with the Geist. We're going to minus this pyro. I suppose maybe I should have played out a Hierarch first. And from here, we're just going to attack down the Gris. They can't block it. And the reason I'm not attacking with the Geist is I just don't want to put the Pyromancer into the graveyard. Not yet, at least. Like, if I do that, they probably have an Undying spell in their hand, so they'll bring it back, draw two. I don't want to give them that card advantage. Okay, opponent Takanumas, sure. And they're going to get themselves a, a Dothy back into play, sure. Okay, so the line from here is going to be... Um, uh, we're going to be using Proliferate this turn. Quarter following pretty good. I think we'll get rid of a hierarch here. Take us an undying malice, sure. We'll dump down the pyro. Done. And then from here, um, okay, so I can just play out young wolf. I suppose maybe playing out the grist was better there. It's in my graveyard. Okay, we're gonna get a hepatra from here. Removal spell. Thoughtseize. I don't know if I love Thoughtseize on the draw. Here where I might... Pylon feels kind of expensive, but it's really good in the late game. Okay, so these seven in, these seven out. I'm not sure how Seed of Hope works with Dothi, uh, but we might find out. When it keeps the seven, we'll keep our seven. Let's do it. Perfect 5-0 on the line. I like seeing a basic swamp to start off. I imagine they take one of our yogs. Wall roots would be reasonable as well if they have removal spells. So that's what they're communicating to us. They have a, a burn spell in hand. Uh, we'll be turn one marsh into our hierarch. Okay, they fetch blood crypt. 
to target player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker and loses one life. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, our turn. I'm gonna play out the windswept teeth. I am giving them information, but I think we're okay with that. Opponent has five cards in hand. Hearse, sure. Okay, and from here I'm actually I'm just fetching basic. One has three cards in hand. Strange they're not doing anything. I wonder if it's just a bunch of removal they're sitting on. All the roots were fine with. So I am going to play around Blood Moon here. I'm not going to play out the tomb as of yet. Play out our wall of roots and we'll pass the turn. Hoping that survives. I'd like to be able to have at least a creature or two around when Yawgmoth hits the battlefield. Hers, sure. That's up to four cards in hand. Not a big fan of the uh, how these these battles look on Magic Online with respect to the fact that they're, they always overlap your cards when they're tapped. I need to figure that out, the formatting of that. All right, we're gonna keep this burden back for our Dryad Arbor. Drawing another basic, not terrible. I think we're okay with that. All right, so we'll play our Yogg, pass turn. I'm expecting this to get terminated, which I'm actually okay with for now. Okay, there it is. Keep my graveyard, sure. Now, as long as they don't discard this one, I think they know about this one, I believe so. Okay, four lands, they do nothing. Fairly slow developing game here. Okay, so that's a really good draw. Basic, basic. All right, y'all gonna play. Geist into play. Or two, y'all does not have, <laughs> y'all does not have haste. Now we'll see if they eat something EOT. If they make a mistake, they don't. They don't have any instant speed removal there either. Like if they had a lightning bolt, I think they hit my Geist with it. Fury, sure. Okay, so if they have an undying spell right now, it looks like they do. Okay, they don't. That's scary. That's not a good draw. It's a little risky on their part. If we did have something like a Court of Calling, we'd be able to cast that EOT and uh, activate our Yogg. Thoughts ease. We got nothing. You're down to nine. I feel like my opponent has a Fury and a red card, and they're debating whether or not they want to use it right now or not. I actually don't think it would be terrible for them to do so. Eh. They don't. Okay. Another Wall of Roots. Not really what we're looking for. Attack them down to seven. Not only because they know it's in my hand at this point, I'm just going to cast it out. Okay, Void Walker number two for the game. First one. With two cards in hand. Crew. Attack. We'll block with this wall of roots. I wish I could see what this creature is. Ashen Reaper. We're flooding out pretty hard here. The reason I'm playing out the Verdant Catacombs is just because I can get a Dryad Arbor off of it. There is the Fury. Through the hearse. Dies. Invasion. Attack at me, attack at me. I have zero cards in hand. 8, 11, put me down to 5. Okay, I think we're gonna block here. Young Wolf, not great. Okay, I think we're just gonna let this happen, unfortunately. Two, one, Menace. Got it. The endurance, not terrible. Not really great, but... Okay, my opponent's swing at me. I'm just gonna take this. This puts me down to one. And the reason being is I have an out here. If I draw into a Geist, I can just win from here. Uh, yeah, we'll shuffle those. That's fine. Maybe I wasn't supposed to do that. Maybe if I drew like an Ooze. All right, Geist, Cord, Shieldred, got him. Boom. Got him. Five zero. 5-0. Uh, I don't know the last time I've done that, but I'm feeling good about that. And those were some very, very tough matchups. So I am ecstatic that we finished that league in that fashion. Let's check out the list here. All right, so... 
Like the core of this list has been performing so, so well for me. I am just thrilled with, with how this has been going. I'm 14 and one my last 15 matches. Uh, those last two leagues, I actually haven't uploaded yet. I was trying to do something special with them. So hopefully I have the time to edit them and get those out next week. But you should see some more 5-0 leagues uh, with similar lists in the near future. Whether it was Seed of Hope, whether it was a Birds of Paradise, whether it was an Abundant Harvest, all of those lists have been just crushing with this core uh, in this metagame. I don't know what's changed or if anything's changed, but this deck is just super strong. The sideboard, um, this is essentially the same sideboard that I have listed in the sideboard guide, which I just updated, which is in the description below. Uh, minus Pylon, and then the sideboard guide has a, a Veil of Summer in it. Um, Pylon, I've been playing, but I haven't actually cast the card yet, so I really can't say whether or not I like it. Um, Theoretically, it seems like it should be good, but uh, it hasn't done anything yet, so I can't really confirm or deny. Um, I am I'm thrilled with this league, if you couldn't tell. I'm, I'm really, really happy with this list. I'm happy with how Yawgmoth has been performing. I've been pretty happy with my play. We're happy on all accounts. We're finishing this week out strong, and we are uh, moving into the weekend with a lot of positivity here. So... Everybody, thank you for joining me for our flawless victory today. Thank you for tuning into my channel. If you haven't done so already and you want to, please hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. Appreciate anybody and everybody that is supporting this channel. And uh, even if you're not, if you're just tuning in, thank you for joining me. I will catch you all on Monday with a new uh, video. And until then, you